What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Cosmic Wonder, where we talk all things Marvel and MCU. Last night, episode six of She-Hulk came out. And so far, I've seen a lot of mixed reviews. Some people like it, some people don't. So right away, let me know if you liked it in the comments down below. Now in this episode, although it did kind of feel like a filler episode, a lot of important things actually did happen. They just weren't the main highlights. However, the main villain has actually been teased and revealed. And if you're really wondering who the heck Intelligentsia is and who is actually behind everything, we'll answer that in this video. Because if you start to connect some of the dots, you can kind of see where this story is going not only within She-Hulk, but also within the MCU as well. So let's dive into the really important things that you need to know about this episode and talk about who the villain could be. So this episode starts off by Jen getting an invitation to be a bridesmaid from an old friend. She feels obligated to go, so of course she says yes. Now last episode we were introduced to Luke Jacobson who designs superhero outfits for superheroes. And this is taken straight from the comics as this is what Luke does in the comics as well. Now, it seems like Luke has actually designed Jen multiple outfits at this point. We know he designed her a She-Hulk suit, but we know that he also designed her a She-Hulk kind of superhero uniform. However, in this episode, in the beginning, we find out that Luke also made a dress for She-Hulk to wear to the wedding. Flash forward to the wedding, Jen actually shows up as She-Hulk. Her old friends start raving over her, telling her how great she looks, but of course, her friend Lulu, the bride, is kind of upset because she feels like she's taking the focus off of her, and it's her big day, and it's her wedding, so she tells her that she wants her to be Jen. Now here, She-Hulk breaks the fourth wall like she does in the comics, talking to us, stating that of course she wanted to show up as She-Hulk at the wedding, not as just Jen, which is the title of the episode, Just Jen. This shows us the big change in Jennifer's mindset from the first episode to now. Originally, Jen rejected She-Hulk and wanted to be just Jen, but now she actually thinks it's really cool that she's She-Hulk and she wanted to brag about it, which is why she showed up as She-Hulk at the wedding. This is lining up a little bit more with the comics where Jen is actually She-Hulk for the vast majority of the time. She really enjoys being She-Hulk in the comics. Now cut back to the law firm, in the beginning Jen said because she had to go to the wedding, Mallory would have to cover for her on a case. Nikki mentioned that she would get to work with her and that it's only a divorce case, but then we find out who the divorce case is for. It is for Mr. Immortal. Now Mr. Immortal in the comics is exactly as he sounds, he's a man who can't die. Now, Mr. Immortal in the comics is a pretty depressed guy. He actually found out that he couldn't die because he tried to kill himself multiple times. Then he realized that he could actually use this for good. He became a superhero and was even a part of the Great Lakes Avengers. However, after not being able to die and watching all of his friends die over time, he became massively depressed again. Now, the reason that he needs a lawyer is actually quite funny. Mr. Immortal has been married several, several times. In the one scene in the law firm, we can actually count nine people that he was married to. The problem is, and why it's so funny, is because he didn't actually get a divorce to these people when he was ready to move on. He simply killed himself, or made it seem like he killed himself, and he thought that this was actually the best way to do it and would spare their feelings the best, instead of having a conversation where he has to explain that he doesn't want to be married to them anymore. So he simply acts like he died and moves on. However, the issue is the internet is a real thing in today's day and age, and everybody is always taking pictures and videos and can find you, especially if you are somewhat a superhero. So all of his ex-spouses, technically not his ex-spouses because he never got a divorce, but now they're all seeking lost damages. One of them has a son that she had to raise alone. The other one is talking about how they spent a lot of money on a funeral, even though he really didn't actually die. So this is why Mr. Immortal needs a lawyer. Now, ultimately, Ultimately, the first time we meet him, Nikki really judges him for basically being a coward. He doesn't really want to deal with it, so he just simply jumps out the window. He simply avoids this conversation like he avoided being married to his ex-spouses. Now back at the wedding, we find that Titania is actually at the wedding. Jen, back in human form at the request of Lulu, sort of pulls Titania to the side, trying to be reasonable with her, saying, hey, this is my friend's wedding, it's very real, you can't be about our beef right now. But Titania claims that she is dating one of the groomsmen and that she was invited. However, Jen sees through this and realizes that it's just a clever ruse for Titania to try to get back at Jen. However, Lulu is kind of starstruck because Titania is still kind of a big celebrity. So she's just happy to have her at the wedding. Now from here, we and Jen meet Josh. And Josh seems like a good dude. He actually is focused on Jen, not She-Hulk. And Jen likes this, of course, because this is a reverse of what was happening recently when she was dating as She-Hulk, where when Guy saw her as the regular Jen, basically rejected her. Also, one of the guys that she went on a date with, Todd, Mr. Baywatch, is most likely one of the villains in this show, which we'll get to in just a bit. 
I like Josh, but I think that he might actually be a bad guy as well. We'll have to wait and see on that. But cutting back to the law firm and Mr. Immortal is actually where we get the first mention of the true villain of this show. Mallory asks all of the spouses how they became aware of Mr. Immortal. That he wasn't actually dead, but indeed faked his deaths, then simply regenerated. One of the women says, I found it on the site Intelligentsia. I saw a video of him. He got hit by like four cars, then got up and walked away. Now this is at first kind of disguised as a man-hating website, however we go on to find that it is much more than that, and anybody who's read the comics automatically knows what Intelligentsia is. Intelligentsia is actually a group made up of extremely smart villains, MODOK being one of them, and we know that MODOK is actually going to be appearing as a villain in Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania, so we start to see the connections here. The leader is also most likely involved in Intelligentsia as well, and there's even a little bit of proof of that later on in the episode, which we'll get to in just to bed. Now at the wedding, Jen ends up getting drunk because she has nothing else to do at the wedding, and she ends up calling her cousin Bruce. Now she doesn't get in touch with him, but she does say in the voicemail that she's been trying to get in touch with him for a very long time. Now she's drunk, so she doesn't actually know how long. She says it's been months or weeks or days. So we don't actually know, but it's been some time. But what we do know is that Bruce is not on the planet. He's not on Earth. He's in Sakaar, or he's on his way to Sakaar. No doubt setting up for his solo Hulk film, which has heavily been rumored to be based off of a World War Hulk storyline. Now Jen is still super drunk and then Titania comes out and sucker punches her outside. Jen says I knew it and Titania basically says of course, duh, I have to get back at you. However, Titania doesn't want to fight Jen just as Jen she wants to fight She-Hulk and after struggling a little bit to turn into her Hulk form just like her cousin Bruce Banner kind of did in Avengers Infinity War, she finally hulks out and pretty much wipes the floor with Titania. Titania gets embarrassed and sees that people are recording and is very rude to them. And this is probably not going to work out too well for her as we know how the internet works. Videos go viral. So I'm assuming there will be some type of cancel culture for Titania within the series which will make Titania hate She-Hulk even more. Now, Mallory and Nikki help the situation with Mr. Immortal, helping his spouses get what they all deserved. They're celebrating together in Mallory's office when they stumble upon a deeper part, a much darker part, to Intelligentsia. You have to make an account, and the account has to be approved, so they basically just kind of act like a bro. On the application, her interests are Bigfoot, Bitcoin, USA, Exercise, Protein, UFOs, and the username is She-Hulk Sucks. Now on here, we see a ton of hate for She-Hulk. We even see people asking how to kill her and stating that she should be killed. Nikki wants to tell Jen, but Mallory says, no, don't tell her because she already has enough to deal with. She doesn't need to deal with this stupidity. But of course, Nikki being the good friend that she is, calls her, leaves her a voicemail and tells her about the whole entire thing. This is where we see her with Josh eating French fries, but see that she is under surveillance. And we quickly realize that some organization is surveilling her and is ready to take her down. We see the old needle that was used to try and pierce her skin by the wrecking crew, which failed. And then we see a new needle, which is seemingly made out of vibranium. I would assume. Now here's where it all kind of starts to connect. It's widely believed, and I assume this as well, that Todd was the member of the wrecking crew that actually tried to stab Jin or She-Hulk with the needle and failed. He showed up on the date with Jin and talked about her being a specimen. He then popped up again at her law firm working with Mallory and more on her in a bit as well. But Todd wouldn't pop up again for no reason. There's clearly something going on with Todd because there really isn't a reason for him to be at the law firm. He was most likely there trying to get closer to Jin and also what I believe is to be working with Mallory. The person who tried to stab She-Hulk is also the only member who kept a ski mask on and we did not see the true identity of. This is pretty much a big sign that it is indeed Todd. Todd also did mention vibranium on the date, wondering if it could actually pierce her skin. So it looks like Todd was simply going on the date to try and find out a little bit more about She-Hulk because his employer wants to take her down. And it's basically been revealed at this point in this episode that Intelligentsia is the true villain of the show. This was actually reported by some insiders not too long ago, and this just confirms it. The only question we have now is who is the leader of this organization, and the answer is probably twofold. One is actually the leader. It's been confirmed that the leader from The Incredible Hulk 
is going to be returning in Captain America New World Order. It's also been reported that there are going to be other variations of the Hulk in the movie as well. We know that the leader has the Hulk's blood inside of him and transformed a little bit, but is most likely looking for more of the Hulk's blood, and who knows what he's been doing all of this time off screen. As far as a villain is concerned, he makes the most sense right now for the main villain of this series, although I am questioning whether or not they'll actually show him, since he is going to be the main villain of Captain America 4. They might only just tease him in the show and set him up for that movie. Now, like I mentioned, MODOK is also a part of Intelligentsia in the comics, and we do have Quantum Mania coming up as well. And although I do think the leader makes the most sense, MODOK could also be behind this as well, working with the leader. Now, as far as Todd is concerned, I'm pretty sure he's just working for Intelligentsia, working for the leader, and is just kind of a normal member of the Wrecking Crew. But I think the big reveal of the show is going to be that Todd is indeed a villain. Now, in the comics, Mallory also turns against She-Hulk at one point in time and tries to take her down. And I think this could be how happening in She-Hulk as well, because why else would Todd be meeting with Mallory at the law firm? I'm assuming that they were meeting most likely to talk about taking down She-Hulk. Either that or Mallory could just simply be an innocent bystander here, and Todd is simply using her to get closer to She-Hulk. So Intelligentsia is the leading villains of this film, most likely led by the leader, and Todd is most likely going to be the face of Intelligentsia for the show. So let me know what you thought about She-Hulk episode 6. I know a lot of people were expecting Daredevil and were disappointed that he did not show up, but we still have three episodes left. So leave your thoughts down below. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to stay up to date on more Marvel news and breakdowns. For live updates, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter. And as always, thank you all so much for watching. Woof woof.